Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Dr. Samaria M. Colbert. I am the founder of Kingdom Creative Counseling. I am a licensed therapist, I'm a published author, and I help you to get free, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally free through Jesus Christ. Let's get going. Today, we're going to talk about discernment. Did discern meant okay um this is uh coming after i did a live it wasn't last week maybe it was three weeks ago i'm taking my time and just chillaxing and and uh, and all that kind of stuff so that's why uh oh okay <laughs> it froze up just for a minute so that's why i'm kind of sporadic a little bit more uh with my teaching schedule anyway again change plug this is my book. It's called The Accuser. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on your Kindle device. It's electronic. It is bomb. Thank you for those who have purchased this book. Um, it, I'm pretty sure it's blessing your life. Um, so for those who have, uh, thank you so much. I am going to be coming up with a workbook, kind of like a Bible study. I don't have a time frame for that. I'm practicing some self-care, taking my time, and pacing myself. So we're going to talk about discernment. Now, in the advertisement, I said your very life may be dependent upon this. It is so important that we understand discernment and what discernment is. Have you ever had an experience with someone saying the right thing, but your spirit is saying, hmm, I don't know about that. How do you know when someone's telling the truth versus a lie? You know, I said last time very boldly, and I make no mistake about this, if you could be easily drawn away to believe lies, to believe falsehoods, to be deceived. You have to question whether or not you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because you're easily led away. All right, so let's talk about this. This is very important. So we got to first start talking about what is the sermon. Say, so what is the sermon? Uh, it is first the ability to judge well. Now, we're not talking about judge like condemn someone, you want to hell, that kind of thing. But to discern what is really going on. On. It is the ability to discern truth from a lie. Listen to this when it is not easily detected. Come on, this is good already. Uh, it is a supernatural perception. Uh, it is divine perception. I'm going to tell you in a minute that you cannot operate in discernment if you don't have a relationship with God. That's number one. But not all Christians who confess Christ have discernment. Um, you're going to see me, hear me talk interchangeably about Holy Spirit and discernment as we go along because uh, Holy Spirit issues or gives us the gift of discernment. Um, so if you don't have the enjoyment of the Holy Spirit or if you're not being led by the Holy Spirit, which I don't want to get ahead of myself, you're going to have a very difficult time discerning. Have you ever thought, man, what, what should I do? This, and then should I date this guy? He sound like he all right, but I don't, you know, discernment. Just ask God for discernment. So with discernment comes wisdom. Also discernment is to be able to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit absent from deception. You know, I told everyone when I wrote this book, The Accuser. <laughs> Guess I'm gonna keep promoting my book. <laughs> um, I had to question, I had to think, how can you, how can you sit here and believe these falsehoods, about, again, about me, um, and again, it could be about anybody. It could be about you. How can you believe some things about me and it does not make sense? Discernment. Discernment. We have to uh, understand discernment. The Bible says, unless these people will be deceived because of signs and wonders. A lot of times people are deceived because people talk well. And they're not fruit inspectors. Okay? So, um, discernment it helps it's, the, it's really the leading of the Holy Spirit, but it it prevents us from being deceived. That's why I put in the advertisement that discern will say discernment will save your life, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get good. Discernment reveals truth in the midst of lies. Now I said in our last live, I said sometimes as a therapist, you know, people will come into your office and they got a good game going on. I mean, they got alligator tears and the Holy Spirit be my because I'm led by the Spirit. I ain't really telling the truth. Let me tell you what the real issue is. And I said last time, you don't have to be a therapist because that is not a, you know, faith-based therapists tend to have discernment as, as a part of our gift. But you don't need to be someone that's in ministry or have a, a counseling practice. or You don't have to be that. All you have to do is be someone who is led by the Spirit. 
You don't got to know somebody. You don't have to have a relationship with that person. You can meet someone for the first time. They get to talking. And your Holy Spirit said, hmm. And your spirit, excuse me, says, what, what? Something ain't right. Discernment. Okay, we're going to talk about how you grow in it. So again, discernment reveals the truth in the midst of a liar. Sometimes when you don't have discernment, things look, things are not always what they seem. And you can have somebody, like I said, they're an actress, they crying tears. <laughs> and they lying through their teeth. So that's why you need discernment. So you are not deceived. And you don't fall prey to the, the spirit of this age. All right? Uh, uh, grace for purpose. I believe this is a church. I'm not sure if it's a ministry. But they put a really good definition. So I have to share. They said that discernment is the ability to see, to hear, and to understand spiritual things that are not readily seen, heard, or understood by the natural eye. That was so good. I gotta say that again. I gotta say it again. So again, great. This is for, it's called grace for for purpose, um, and it's either a church or a ministry. But they put this ability to see, to hear, to understand a spiritual thing when it is not readily seen, heard, or understood. Right? Watch this. The sermon is how do we perceive and receive and walk in righteousness. You could have somebody that can that can articulate the scripture and they are still deceiving you I had a um it wasn't a college i won't say high school college professor one two i just remember i don't remember um his name but i remember having this teacher and he was always quoting scripture and at first you would think he was quoting scripture so much you would think that he believed in god well, he was recording scripture, but he was reading the Bible from a history. So the Bible is is the final authority on anything. Okay? So if you don't want to hear the final authority on, authority on anything, don't ask me because I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. <laughs> I mean, it just is. It's the way to life. It's the way to heaven. If you don't believe in the Bible, you just, you know. Um, so anyway, so he will quote scriptures. But the Bible has all kinds. It has soliloquies. It has uh, a good poetry. It gives you historical context. It gives you really nice stories. It gives you um, um, all kinds of things. But the Bible says that the word of God is a living word. It, 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 it divides and it, and, it, and, it, and it transforms us. It is the living word of God. But you can have someone who really articulates the word of God and even reads it. But they don't read it from that context. See, my professor was uh, fascinated by the benefits of the Word of God. He didn't see God as real. He was actually agnostic. He wasn't reading the Bible to get uh, to grow his faith. He was reading the Bible because it was a really great history book. And it really is a great history book. It's a lot of great things. But it is the Word of God, first and foremost. Now, the sermon is how do we know God's will? I mean, who should I should I marry this person? Is the person for me? Where should I move to? What is God really doing in my life? You know, uh, what about these people in my corner? You have to discern people and what your next step is. Like. So the sermon is also come with the wisdom of God. The sermon will tell you, stay here. Don't go there. Wait a minute. So if you find yourself kind of confused all the time. You in one relationship, another relationship, another relationship, your life is chaotic. More than likely, we have to uh, begin to seek the Lord to grow in discernment. Okay? And then, again, it's okay to ask people for wise counsel. Obviously, I know I'm a counselor. So, it's okay to ask people for wise, counsel, for wise counseling, but it should come as confirmation because you have discernment. If you find yourself being gullible, always believing lies, like I said last time, you've been saved 20 and 30 and 40 years, and then now you are quick to believe lies and, and something about something's off there. We're going to talk about why people uh, don't have this sermon. So, first scripture of the day, John 16, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, what is the, so again, uh, the sermon comes from the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is also identified by the spirit of truth. Okay, and I said this in one of my last lives. So he, and the Holy Spirit is a he. I was at a training, they kept referring to God as he, she, or whomever. The Bible says God is a he. 
period, point blank. Okay? I guess we know God is a spirit, blah, 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 but he's a he. And he will guide you into all truth. All truth. Not some truth, not subjective truth, not just the delusion of your truth. You know, in your eyes, you're right, but you're really wrong, that kind of thing. Uh, God is into all truth, and he will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what is yet to come, and he will tell you what he has heard about the future. Come on, somebody. That's John 16, 13. I believe that's from the New Living Translation. Notice it says all truth. All truth. So when you got a liar on your hands, Holy Spirit said, that person is lying. They're not telling you the truth. I remember some years ago, um, I was a college student, this is many, many, many years ago, and I uh, traveled with a group of, of, of Christians um, to a certain place. I'm kind of being very general. And there was a gentleman there who was our media person, okay? Not like we do now, because y'all are, we, we do a whole different thing now than we did back then. And he was our media person. He's a great guy. And he would quote scriptures and talking about God and reading the scripture and all those kinds of things. And I remember one of my, um, my, uh, I don't know what you call her, my friends, but she was all another student, well, basically that was on there uh, with me. And she was, oh, she, he, was, he must really love God. Look at him. And I said, and I don't know how I knew, I was like, no, you don't. He really loves God. I mean, look at his his cold scripture. I said, no, he don't believe it. He doesn't really believe uh, in God in the true sense. Now, mind you, he was cold scripture. Right? This is a long time ago. Um, so we, you know, we're hanging out doing, you know, different activities throughout our travels there. And then we got into a conversation maybe a couple of days later, and he was saying, he he basically said that there are multiple ways to get to God. And there is not one God. But there's multiple ways, and he kind of used an example of such and such, such and such, and uh, of I don't I don't I don't I won't go into detail because um, I'm not friends with him, but I'm friends with her <laughs> uh, on Facebook. So shout out to you, girl. No no, no shade, no shade. Um, and so he began to say what he really believed. Now initially, we you would have thought he was a Christian by the amount of scriptures that he was quoting. But as time goes on, he revealed himself. Yeah, he believed in scripture, but he believed in all. He didn't believe there was one way to God. Well, the scripture said there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. So when I initially said, no, he don't really believe God, I was impressed by him quoting scriptures. And again, I've, I've, again, y'all, this is a lot. This is probably over 20 years ago. So I've learned a lot more you know, to use wisdom. Sometimes I observe something, I hear something, and I don't always speak it out. That time I was just like, no, you're not. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't speak it out to him. I was talking to her. And she's like, no, he's called. So that's what I want to share with you as it relates to the sermon. You, the sermon is like a seed that'll grow, okay? We're going to talk about that in a minute. But most of the time when you meet people or when you are initially introduced to somebody or if someone is trying to impress you, you don't meet them, you meet their representative. So people feel like they're in, in the presence of someone important, they'll put on airs. If they know you love God, they're going to start quoting scripture. If they know you all about God and Jesus and, you know, uh, that's how how they'll be. They know you are passionate about business, they will be passionate about business. People are chameleons and they will try to impress you. All right. And it's not for us to judge, but also don't get deceived by what you see. A couple of years ago, um, there's someone, an excuse me, an individual that I used to uh, be cool with. Right. And so but I, I but I know the person a long time and I knew they had a track record of just being very inconsistent. They had a track record of really not completing anything. They will always talk a good game. But never complete anything. <laughs> okay? So if I say, hey, I got this business, God is blessing, the individual is like, yeah, me too. They didn't really have a business. <laughs> if I was talking about the goodness of God, oh, yeah, it. You know, so they had a, a real history of just, just, and I, I use this real word, um, a lot, not to be disrespectful, they just hadn't accomplished really anything in their life, but they were always talking game, talking a good game. So that person was around business leaders, like I said, they would, Cold business. You would think that they was calling business so well that they had some kind of knowledge or some kind of business. Well, they really didn't. When they were around prophetic people, they would start prophesying and be in the midst of prophetic people. Um, and so you would be, you could easily, if you didn't know the person, be impressed. 
And so, and uh, you know, I, I was hanging around the person, but I didn't really deal with them. When I say I didn't deal with them, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna try to, you know, put, uh, invite them to my business or do anything with them because I, I understood the pattern. Right? You understand? So, just because I'm, I'm around you, don't necessarily mean that you can't hang around me. It just means that I know your pattern. You know, I'm not gonna do business with you because I know you're not gonna produce anything. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it just is what it is. But I was observing how people would meet the person. They were like, oh my god, this is such, such a person ain't accomplished not near a thing. Okay, not no shade. It just is what it is. Sometimes people talk. The more they talk, the more they probably ain't got what they say. You know what I'm saying? Because they're trying to impress you. And I just remember observing that. And I was thinking, Lord, why do people get so impressed by people who literally have produced absolutely nothing? Like literally nothing. And he said, because most people, true story, he said, because most people are not fruit inspectors. They get easily deceived by somebody that's talking, that has not produced anything because they aren't fruit inspectors. And so when we are asking God for discernment, you have to get to a place, and it's not the same as pessimism, but you have to get to a place where what people say, you don't uh, you, you don't put a whole lot of, 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 of trust in what they say. What do you do? I know people even now that will prophesy, preach, read scriptures all day long. But when they get behind closed doors, your lifestyle does not line up to what you say you, you believe. Like, what's the point of going to church and you still live in, in sin Monday, Monday through Saturday? Like, what's the point? I know people say, I'm a prophet. I'm a pro I can prophesy. I'm a business owner. They ain't got their business. And maybe you can prophesy, but you're not prophesying by the Holy Spirit. Because the lifestyle does not line up to what they say. We have to use discernment, and that is not being judgmental, but you have to take an inventory of people that are in your life. This is why I've got to the place even in my in my life and in my business where I don't put fluff in your title was great. And, and, and what you do is great, but I have met people, pastor, prophet, elder, uh, doctor, something such, and, and literally like are completely opposite from what they declare. I mean, complete I mean, I, I can't tell I'm not gonna tell nobody to see, but completely opposite of what they declare. Completely opposite. No type of fruit. We have to use the sermon so we are not pulled away. Right? And then you know who to have in your inner space. All right. So <laughs> um uh so when we have discernment, it means we are led by the spirit. Discernment is not the same as your conscious and it's not the same as your intuition. Okay. Everybody got a conscious and everybody got an intuition, uh, you know, and that's, that's not the same as having discernment or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's not the same. All right. Uh, you can be led by different spirits. There are spirits of lust. There's spirits of error. There's a spirits of there's uh, there's a spirit of deception. Uh, you can prophesy accurately and still be under a spirit of deception. Okay, so there's different spirits that that a person can be led by. When we said we want to develop discernment, that means I got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Discernment only comes. Through the Holy Spirit. Now you'll hear people in this new age dispensation saying things like discernment. And because you know a lot of times the language of the kingdom of God people use. But we're not talking about the same context. Right? So again the spirit of truth is another is, is the spirit of discernment. So if you're operating in falsehood, in deception, in lies. You don't have the spirit of discernment on the inside of you. Or the Holy Spirit, excuse me. Watch this. Romans 8, 14 says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are children of God. Not just because you confess Christ or you go to church. Who are really children of God? Those who are led, according to Romans 8, 14, by the Spirit. So when discernment comes, it gives wisdom. It is the ability to know what direction to take. That's good right there. That's good right now. That's good right there. <laughs> All right, let me read to you First Chronicles. Excuse me, First Corinthians two thirteen. It says, "These things we speak not in words which which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, cons comparing spiritual things with spiritual." Okay, and that actually was not the scripture I was looking for. Let me let me look it up here. Okay, but it's actually uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Well, watch this. But the natural man, 
the natural man uh, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are not spiritually discerned. Um, excuse me. Let me read that again. I said that wrong. They are spiritually discerned. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, the natural man. Nor can he know them, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Hmm, they're spiritually discerned. So there's some things that you will not know in the spirit realm unless you operate in discernment. The, when you operate in discernment, the, the nobody you like I said, you don't gotta sit there and have someone's uh, your, your, uh someone's history. You don't have to know them, but you know what someone's lying to you when you have discernment. You may not know all the details. You know, I'll recently tell someone this a couple weeks ago. I said like, something. I, I was like, I don't know something. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I know something is off. And it was, it, it was, it, it, it eventually came to light. So God doesn't always give you the detail, but sometimes your, your, your discernment may say, or the Holy Spirit may say, something off about this. That don't, that don't make sense. That ain't right. Okay. Now we're going to talk about how your discernment can grow. There comes a point where, you know, when you first start operating in discernment, you just start questioning things. We're going to talk about that. You start saying, huh? No, but then as you grow in the sermon, you can call it just like this. So sometimes people can be saying the right thing, but they had the wrong motive. They they put a nice package uh, 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 together and they say this is this this is the spirit of God when it's really not. Some things we do in the name of healing is not really healing. You just need validation and affirmation. You see what I'm saying? So we have to discern. Jesus was masterful about it. This is one thing that I love about Jesus that I, that I want to be able to truly master. See, Jesus, when people have conversations with him, they had uh, ill motives, right? And so sometimes they would ask Jesus a question, but they weren't really asking a question to get a, to get a answer. Like there's there's different types of questions. Like if I ask you a question, I generally want to know some knowledge that you may have. They weren't really asking Jesus questions to get the knowledge that he had in some cases. The Pharisees and Sadducees, they were trying to trap him. And Jesus was masterful because oftentimes he would not speak to their questions, but he would speak to the motive and the spirit behind their question. And then he would talk about the motive and the spirit behind their question. That's the sermon. You got to read it. When you read the, the words of Jesus, how the, the, the different people came at him and his response, almost if you're not paying attention, almost as if it doesn't add up. But he wasn't speaking to their question. He was speaking to the motive behind their question. Why are you saying this? Why are you bringing me this information? What's going on? Come on now. Now, uh, uh, Galatians 5, 16 through 23. Uh, 16 says we walk in the spirit and we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We got that, right? So uh, when you uh, when you have a lustful spirit, you do not uh, you cannot operate in, in the spirit of sermon and lust at the same time. Okay, that's why the world cannot receive uh, or operate in in real true discernment from the Holy Spirit. They have a new age type of discernment, okay? But it's not the Holy Spirit. Verse 17, for the flesh lust against the spirit, right? Uh, but if you, and I'm going to skip all around, read it again on your own time. Galatians 5, 16 through 23. Verse 18 says, but you are led by the spirit, therefore you are not under the law. Watch this. Now these are the works of the flesh. And these works of the flesh will prevent you from operating in discernment. Because remember, we already said in verse 17 that the flesh uh, and the spirit are against one, one another. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. That means it's in opposition to. Okay, this is why you call yourself. Let me, let me. This is why someone can say, I'm a Christian, but, uh, you know, and, and, and you, I mean, you, you may have confessed Christ, you know, 20 years ago, but your, your actions and your words don't line up because you're really, you're really being influenced by a different spirit that's not the Holy Spirit. Just because someone, I'm, I'm saying this again. Just because someone says I'm a Christian does not mean they operate under the gifts of the Spirit. You can have carnal Christians. You can have Christians who only show up on Sunday. You can have Christians who have made up in their mind, I don't care what the Scripture is, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, however I want to do it. And they're not being led by the Lordship of God. Okay? So what are some things that prevent us from operating this in discernment? Uh, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, which means indecency, vulgar sexual uh, behavior, sexual, uh, vulgar sexual behavior. Now, again, some of y'all are like, wow, that ain't really me. That ain't me. I'm, I'm fine. We're going to go keep going up. We're going to hit your roll, so to speak. But I'm just giving you 
giving you some of the tea, right? So it said in verse 19, idolatry, which is the worship of idols. You can worship anything. You can worship, worship a person. You can worship a possession. You can worship, um, uh, you know, anything, the, the, uh, a lifestyle. You can worship something. You can worship the idea of wanting to uh, uh, be married. You know, that can be your idol, okay? So any, you can worship anything, not just the spirit, not, not just God. Right. So when we when we roll over into idolatry, which is idol worship, sorcery. These are not Christians who claim to be Christians, but you are, are following tarot cards and uh, you in horoscopes. You know, you a Libra, you a, a, a Sadducees, or whatever you call. I don't even follow things. What do they call a Capric Capricorn? Is that what you call you? You say you're a Christian, but you are quick to follow a horoscope. Well, you're not operating on the Spirit of God nor the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit does not contend with your sorcerer, which you're operating under in the spirit of witchcraft, which is sorcery. Okay? So you that's why you don't have discernment. Okay? So you got to put, put those things away. Hatred. Contention. These are people who are always in arguments. I'm not talking about you had one person or not one person. Every night that somebody tried you. You understand? That day you just hadn't prayed. It was in your flesh. And you, you know what I'm saying? You was like, well, if you if you really, you know what I'm saying? You told them the business. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about you have a consistent a pattern of being contentious and, and, and argumentative uh, against people. You always got a problem with people. These people are not operating under the spirit of God. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, someone that is jealous of you will, will clay up and down that they have discernment, they do not. Okay, you cannot operate in these things that have discernment. Flesh, selfish ambition. A lot of the things that we say are God are really not God. A lot of the things we say, I'm a Christian. You you know, people that are, and my pastor kind of alluded to this on Sunday, but a lot of times we're just in, in, in self-promotion. It's all about you. It's not really about God. It's about you. And so we have self-promotion or selfish ambition. But the Bible says only what we do for Christ will last. But at the end of the day, um, it's not really about God. You just happen to be a Christian. But your life and everything that you post and everything that you say is really about you and self-promotion. It's not really about God. Okay? Um, what else? Uh, dissensions, which is discord and heresy. This is a lot of what we're seeing nowadays. And these are people who have opinions that are contrary to Scripture. Okay, opinions, you just, I don't know, that ain't really right. Or that y'all Christians, or that ain't what the Bible really say. And you have an opinion that is contrary to Scripture. You can't operate in discernment. Uh, then there's envy. Uh, there's obviously murder, but there's different ways to murder someone. I remember y'all, shameless plug, my book, The Accuser. These people are trying to assassinate your character, your purpose, and your destiny. But thank God, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But these are murderers. Drunkenness. You, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, don't be a Christian and you always drunk. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Something ain't right. <laughs> Robbery. That's not hit your heart. But, hey, I'm, I'm trying to knock this out so I can uh, finish my day. <laughs> um, rivalries again these are people that are always trying to compete with you so we have if we really have the same holy spirit on the inside of us there's no need to try to compete you don't got to compete with me i ain't got to compete with y'all i'm in the business of minding my own business and i mean when i say minding my own business i mean tending to growing developing and continue to operate in the business the purpose the plan that god has placed before me so i can see what you're doing but i'm not really overly invested in it because um, that's just not my business. It's not, I'm not, I'm tending to my own business. And so when you have someone that is always in someone else's business, you always got an opinion about what someone else should do. And you, you have, uh, uh, you know, this, 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 um, uh, facetious kind of nature with someone else, what some other people should do with their time, their business, their stuff, their family, their relationships. Uh, you're not being led by the Spirit of God. And you again, you'll see this all the time in people. You'll see it on social media where you mind other people's business. And try to be spiritual about it. I just need to speak to discern. No, you don't. you just being messy. <laughs> yes, I did just say that. Okay, let's keep it moving. Okay? So, and the Bible clearly says in verse 21 of Galatians 5, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, hell is real. All right, let's keep it moving. Um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against there is no law. When you have discernment, God will release secret things to you, right? But oftentimes, and this is how you, it's not, you can discern, it's, it's, it's different from the spirit of fear. The spirit of pessimism is rooted in jealousy and fear. 
when God begins to reveal certain things to you, um, it's you still have peace. Like God may say, hey, this person is not telling you the truth. But you're not like angry and like, ugh, and you're looking down upon people and now you're afraid. And blah, blah, blah. You're not going through all these kind of changes. You just know what to pray for. Okay? You just know what to pray for. So we're going to continue on. So you cannot be led by the spirit of discernment if you are willingly participating in habitual sin. So you got to love God. And then and say, God, I want to grow in you. I want to grow in your discernment. But there's some things that may be stopping that. And, you, and again, in our prayer time, in our worship time, God, what is stopping me? I know people will operate in habitual sin. You're going to do what you want to do, however you want to do it. And that's fine. And you're going to use scripture to justify it. And then wonder why I don't, I'm confused. But why are you confused? Because, you, you know what I'm saying? There's a reason for that. So you can't, again, we're going to talk about things that stops the person from operating in, in discernment. Okay, we must think and act according to scripture. So therefore, I have to have, a, and I just realized I don't have my Bible with me. Uh, I have Bible scriptures, but my, my Bible is in the other room. So um, that means I have to act and think according to the word of God. I have to develop a relationship with God. That's how you develop discernment. You have to start developing a relationship with the very nature of who God is. God will speak through his word. So when you're out and about and when and, and there are times when you have to use that gift of the sermon, you're not going to find the scripture. What does the Bible have to say concerning? No, you're not doing it. It just, it just comes back to you when you need it. Okay? So how do I walk in this sermon? We're almost done here. How do I walk in this sermon? One, I have to make an, 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 an intentional decision. Okay, we talk about being led away, um, but I have to make an intentional decision to be led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, that includes turning away from sin. You know, there's some things you're going to continue to struggle with, but again, as you continue to grow in God, those things won't have that stronghold in your life. But you just have to make an intentional decision. I want my life, my Lordship to be led by the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. So most of the time, so there's one translation, excuse me, that says path, P-A-T-H. And there's another translation that says P-A-T-H-S, paths, as in, uh, as more than one, okay? There are different times in your life where you got to know what your next step is. Where should I move to? Who should I marry? Uh, should I take this job? Is this person who uh, who is speaking to me? Are they telling me the truth? So you acknowledge God. Or you, you know, you want to acknowledge God when you're in the midst of things. But oftentimes, you should really acknowledge God before you get into it. Don't acknowledge God when your heart is involved in a relationship. Say, hey, is this really God? God, is this my husband? Because your heart is already involved and your heart is going to deceive you. Okay, so your acknowledgement starts beforehand. I, I, you know, I have a colleague that said, uh, you know, you just keep going until God tells you to stop. And I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think there's a scripture. I think that we have to acknowledge God in all our ways. We just don't do whatever we want to do and keep going. Because the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man that leads to destruction. So I got to say, Lord, what is your will beforehand? Okay, now that doesn't mean every morning I'm getting up and we're getting dressed. I got to go in the tongues and, and, and praying and fasting and figure out what my outfit should be. Okay, <laughs> I'm not saying that, but I, the Bible says acknowledge him in all your ways. That means if I put on something and it's too tight. The Holy Spirit will say, no, says, go ahead, go ahead. Now, he may not say it like that, but he's going to still say, uh-uh, go back in that house and go put on something that fit. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit will talk to you about that. Um, what about this relationship? Now, I give my, you know, I, I give examples from my own life. But I remember uh, I had a, a gentleman that was trying to talk to me. He was trying to get with me. He was trying to, you know what I'm saying, which happens. And something was off, and I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. I couldn't, I mean, the man was quoting scripture, and he was uh, some kind of a, a, a title in the church, and he appeared to love God. And I was just a little bit hesitant, but I knew it wasn't the spirit of fear, because I'm not afraid, you know what I'm saying? But something was just like, something ain't, hmm, something off, you know what I'm saying? But I couldn't put my finger on it. The Holy Spirit began to speak to me again, discernment. And what the Lord began to release to me concerning this person was dead on the truth. But to the surface, if I was talking to, to somebody, if I didn't have the sermon, there's a girl, he, he sold such and such, and he called scripture, and he loved God. Child, this man was a hot mess. <laughs> he was a hot mess. 
You understand? So, but again, discernment and acknowledging God before my heart got involved, before I was all googly gobbly, oh, he's an apostle. Oh, look, he's pastor such and such. Oh, he's doctor. And he's, and you know, he loved God because he's quoting scriptures with revelation knowledge. Mm-mm, sis. No, not over here. Okay? So, we acknowledge God beforehand. And then even uh, even after you've taken the right path, we continue to acknowledge God. Even uh, when you, your assignment is finished in one place, we continue to acknowledge God. But we don't just go, 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 and then when God says, hey, wait a minute, I ain't telling you that. Oh, ne- oh now I acknowledge you, God. Because that would be contrary to Scripture. And we want to follow Scripture, right? Okay? So when I have this sermon, I can accept and admit the existence of a real truth. Like I said, not not my version of the truth, not delusional truth, not the truth that looks right in my own eyes. Like I said last time, you know, we got great actresses out here, these great actors. I don't know. It ain't my fault. Lying. That's why you need discernment. Because people will lie to you to your face. Call scripture, shout, Hit my shot back in tongues and go right there and lie and be lying the whole time. You say, oh, Sister John Dell, so spiritual. She was a straight liar. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and this is one thing I learned many, many, many years ago. And this, this is true as it relates to truth, as it relates to truth. It may not necessarily be the most spiritual thing, but I'm telling you as it relates to truth. Is that you cannot get people to be honest with you if they are not honest with themselves. Mm, that's good. I'm going to say it again because I think it's real good. You cannot get people to be honest with you if they are not first honest with themselves. Look at my time here. Okay. Um, And so there is a thing called self-deception. Self-deception. You so be- see if you believe your own lies. Uh, I think it was an apostle. Uh, apostle, I can't think of your name. I'm so sorry, but a great, great man of God, who said people will believe their own thoughts about you simply because that, that thought came into their mind. Say, so look at you and think, oh, she, 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 she ain't all that. She such and such and such, and it's a lie. But they think it's the truth simply because it popped into their mind. And so we, you will meet people that are under such self-deception that you can't get truth from them because they are self-deceived. This is why Jeremiah 17, 9 says, uh, the heart is deceitfully weak, wicked above all, and desperately sick. Who can understand it? So we have something ticking on the inside of us that is pertinent to our life, our health, our strength, and our livelihood. Your heart stops, stops you dead. And the Bible said the thing on the inside of us is deceitful. That's why we don't follow our hearts or our emotions. What I feel and what I think. What I just felt like your heart will deceive you. That's why y'all people going from one relationship to next relationship to next relationship. All gullible. Because your heart is deceived. So no, and I know I know that may come from a lot because y'all know I'm a therapist. So we deal with the heart, then we deal with the emotions. But no, you don't follow your heart. Your heart will lead you wrong. So there's always well, your heart always follow your heart. It will never lead you wrong. Like who says? Your heart will lead you to destruction. Your heart will lead you to deception. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart. Guard your heart, according to uh, Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart, about what I put. it determines the course of your life. You don't follow your heart. There's no scripture that says follow your heart. No scripture. We follow God. We follow his voice. We follow the leading of the Lord. We don't follow our hearts. Well, I, I just want to be happy. Can't you just be happy for me? No, I can't because your heart is deceiving you to live a lifestyle outside of scripture. I know I'm hitting them hard, but it's okay. It's okay. So we got to commit to obedience because the sermon increases over time as you are obedient to God. 
disobedience is it's almost like that stopper you know when you when you when you you know you got a zinc and you have a stopper to stop the water from flowing if you want to get you want to get water that's how kind of how it is when we're operating disobedience it stops the flow it stops the flow I'm not telling you the minute you disobey, you're going to hell. I'm saying it stops the flow of, of God. Okay? So we have to just invite the Holy Spirit in. There's a wonderful book. I encourage you to read y'all. That was a classic book by Benny Hinn. And it's called um, uh, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. I love that book. I probably read it a couple times in my life. It's, it's an older book, but it's great. And so read the book called Good Morning, Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn, Pastor Benny Hinn. All right? So watch. But I'm full. We're almost finished. Watch what you watch. Hear and see. Watch what gets access to your spirit. Now, when I was a little girl, we sing a song, Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is watching down below. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. And then go, Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. And so, and I, I won't sing it all, but we, you know, you, most of y'all, hopefully y'all remember that song, right? But we were, we were taught to be careful. And it's not, we weren't taught to be careful under a religious, because cause I'm saved, so I can't listen to that, because I'm saved. I'm just scared of the devil. No, what you give your, your spirit access to gives your spirit access. You know what I'm saying? So if you're watching things that are maybe uh, sexual in nature or you, you're watching things that are, you know, a lot of cursing in it. If you're listening to music that, because music has a spirit attached to it, whether you want to believe it or not, it has spirits attached to it. And, you're, and, and you listen to lustful spirits by artists who operate under spirits of lust and sexual perversion. Guess what? That's going to influence your spirit. And therefore, you're going to be dreaming, thinking, and seeking, and, and seeking after certain things that are contrary to God because of what you allow in your spirit. Now, when I was younger, you know, uh, but the old folks you tell not to do certain things. They, ne they didn't necessarily tell us why. But now I've gotten older and mature, I realized, well, why should they have to tell us why? Sometimes it's just good wisdom. You know, when I'm, uh, if I'm watching something that's too, uh, too much uh, cursing and things of that nature, I, I turn it off. Because I don't want that to get in my spirit. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That I stub my toe and, and a bomb come out like, beep. <laughs> I don't, I, that's not my thing. You understand the certain things I gotta go. We all have to do that. You understand? So if you're having a hard time, what have you been filling your what have you been filling your ears with? Your heart with? Your 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 uh your, your eyes with. Now I'm not telling you I'll be so deep you can now, I don't really watch a whole lot of television uh, myself. I really don't watch it hardly at all. Um Let's just, I just find it, I get, I get easily distracted and it's boring to me. So I like read a book or something like that, but it just, I just get distracted. So I'm, but I'm not telling you to be so spiritual that you can't hardly watch the television because it got spirits. Oh my God. You know, I'm not telling you to do that. <laughs> I'm not telling you that you got to walk around. You can't go to the movies and you got to wear a skirt down to your ankles because you got to be holy. I'm not telling you to do that. But you gotta guard your spirit. Why do you believe that? What what what? Paul asked the uh, the one of the churches he was uh, uh, overseeing over. Who beguiled you? What happened? You started all. And I'm paraphrasing. You started out so strong, and now you've gone back to a religious or uh, a legalistic mindset. What happened? And he says, "Who beguiled you?" I wrote a book on who beguiled you, and that means. What happens is you are running the race so well and you become deceived. What happened? Who beguiled you? Right? The other thing you want to do is put away gossip, slander, and back. I can't stand a gossiper. I can't stand a gossiper. I can't stand a backbiter. I, if you listen, uh, we don't, I just can't do it. These people do not last long in my life. I cut these people off because I have experienced people who are who ha who don't like me who came up with all kinds of foolery my book the accuser all kinds of uh, uh backbiting all kinds of, uh, of false witnesses against me and I never knew nothing I ain't I was so I, I didn't have a clue and so what happens if you drink poison long enough eventually you're gonna you are going to get contaminated. If you sip the tea of poison, even in small sips, you're going to get contaminated. So if you listen to gossip, because that has a spirit with it. If you listen to gossip, if you listen to rumors, you're always minding someone else's business. 
you're always into it, and you always trying to figure this why I don't see the latest celebrity who's cheated on his wife and who's dating who and and uh, and, and and who did why well, why does that these people don't pay my bills? Why does that matter to you? You know, so there's some people who really don't have a life, so they are overly invested in someone else's life. But when you're fully, truly dedicated to the task in front of you, I'm not saying you don't hear anything, because obviously you go to the grocery store, you go, I mean, we, we do life, right? We do life. You go to the grocery store, you go to church, you go, I mean, you hang out with friends. I mean, you have a full life. But when you're overly invested in the lives of other people, you wonder who fell from grace, what pastor fell from grace. What church? You operating, you're not operating under the Spirit of God. And last time, and like I said, uh, and I've said this before, I, I shut people down. And I'm not even mean about it. If you start going that direction, I say, no, I won't talk about that. And I'm very nice about it. I'm not like, bah, 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 bah. you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not that person. But if you keep at it, then I'm going to tell you again in a more stern way. And if you keep at it, then I'm going to kick you out of where we together. I'll either get up and leave where the restaurant. Um, I, I promise you, I, I take it there. Uh, you can get out of my house if you if you if you even in my house. By the way, you can get out of my car. We're not sitting here talking about nobody's gossip about anybody. And then because I went through a season of my own uh, character being assassinated for things I was completely innocent of, had no idea. I am even that much more extra. So if anyone, and I'm not talking about like my clients again, because I'm a therapist and I'm helping people walk through their healing process, right? So I'm, I'm not talking about that. But anyone, if you have ever talk to me on my personal cell phone and you start telling me someone else's business, I say very nice. I don't want to talk about that. I may say in a joke, like, don't talk about such and such. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, I'm being nice about it. Like I said, Lord, no, I'm being nice about it. You keep going on. Then I'm going to say, listen, let me tell you what this is. Then I'll be mean about it. And when I say mean, I'm not necessarily like, <sighs> I'm more like, first of all, let me tell you what I don't do. I don't talk about people. I do not have an opinion about other people's life, their business, their ministry that has nothing to do with me. Okay? And furthermore, I do know for a fact that people who gossip about other people are secretly jealous about them. Secretly jealous of their position and authority. Which if anyone has ever tried that with me, and it's a very small few, that was the case. So, <laughs> so you got to watch people who are backbiters who, um, now the scripture that I'm referencing, you can read it on your own time. Proverbs 6, 6, uh, chapter 6, 16 through 19 talks about how God hates a gossiper or someone who sold discord. So these are people who do things like they're very prideful. They have a lying tongue. They say that you said things that you never said you never did. They also uh they 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 plot evil, right? They erase to do wrong. They they're false witness who pours out lies. I just I saw her. She really did it. She really did it. And they lie. So what happens is these are these are spiritual poisons, okay? That slowly introduce you to um the works of the enemy, not the works of God. And the more you listen to these things, it begins to contaminate your spirit. And then you begin to operate under, and then you, you it stops up your ability to operate in discernment. Okay? Now you become a person easily led away by lies. Did you see John Doe over here? Let me tell you what John Doe did, girl. Let me tell you what I heard you say John Doe did. And John Doe ain't you none of the, none of the kind. John Doe wasn't thinking. Well, now you're participating in assassinating someone's character because you're not led by the Spirit of God. Now, because you're not led by the Spirit of God, you don't have discernment, and now you have opened your spirit up to any type of spirit that decides to come in. Jealousy, envy, and rivalry is a spirit that's not from God. Okay, let's keep it moving. So, again, a few more things. How do we commit to, how do we go on discernment? We have to commit to prayer, study, and fasting. So look at it like this. Remember, relationship is developed over time. It's not a, so when you, well, I think it was Joyce Myers who said that when you first uh, are introduced to Christ, you don't necessarily have a, the strongest relationship. You you now have a solidified eternal life. The same similar to like let's say for example you just met somebody, right? You like each other. You know you like him. He likes you. Whatever. But how do you establish a relationship? How do you establish? Is this someone that I want to establish a relationship with? Excuse me. Is this someone that I want to establish a relationship with? Is this someone that I want to establish? What type of relationship? Is, is it a casual relationship where I see you in the Walmart? Hey, keep it moving. Is it a friendship? 
or are you someone that can be my spouse, right? You don't know that you may just know that you like each other, but you don't know the type of relationship or or the depth of that relationship until you have conversation, until we talk. Well, it's the same way with Christ. There's some people who got saved 10 years ago, but they put Christ or they put God in a corner somewhere and they don't even talk to him ever again. So your relationship with God is a relationship. It's developed. So the more you pray, praying is not just listening. Praying is not just asking God for stuff. It is listening and receiving. When you study, I'm listening and I'm receiving. When I'm fasting, I am I, I am uh, I am putting away my flesh and I'm allowing my, my my spirit to begin to hear what God is saying. I'm developing a relationship. And remember, relationships are developed over time. Understand when you've operated under a spirit of error. Now, we all have done it. So, spirit of error can come in different places. Maybe you believe the lie about someone and it was found out that was not the truth. And you realize that, you know what? I was being influenced by the spirit of deception because I didn't guard my heart or guard my ears. Maybe it was a doctrine that you were taught that was not of God. You know, I was <laughs> uh, I was actually in the store recently, for, um, actually today, and a woman was talking about how she didn't believe that a woman, and I, to my, in my opinion, I'm, I'm ear hustling now, y'all. She was just kind of loud. She had to pray for a speakerphone, so I kind of inadvertently heard without hearing. You know, and she didn't believe that women could be in leadership positions. And, um, and I, again, I know the context of that. I don't know if she just meant work. I don't know if she meant church. That wasn't my business. I kept moving. Um, and so... So, so, so you could create a doctrine. You could be deceived by a doctrine. So now that, you know, God has called you into ministry or God has called you to be a, 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 a women business leader, but you didn't operate on that. You didn't follow that path because you were taught wrong doctrine. Um, maybe you had a time where you didn't know that gossip and rumors and, 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 and accusations and things lead you down the wrong path. Um, maybe you thought that you were right and maybe, you know, so whatever happened doesn't really matter too much. What happened is a matter of when you recognize it, recognize that God has given you a great gift because there's some people that go throughout their whole life operating under a sphere of deception. So when you recognize, when God points it out to you, he's not saying, hey, I'm trying to condemn you. He's not saying, hey, you're going to hell. He's giving you a gift so you can put, he can put you back on the right path. Okay, so have corrective action. If you've offended someone, if you've mistreated someone, if you, you know, if you've uh, condemned your friend for for being in a woman in ministry or something like that, and and you at the time you had true conviction about it, whatever it was, if there is a corrective action to take, go ahead and take it. Repent before God, but if you have to go to that person, you understand what I'm saying. So again, if it depends upon the situation, in all situations. Okay, it's okay to question what you hear. Um, Proverbs sixteen twenty three says, "There's a way that seems right to a man, but leads to death." So it's okay to question. And again, when you first start developing the gift of discernment, um, you, you you just you may just start questioning things. When I first went away to college, um, I just remember I was never taught about spiritual gifts or anything like that. We just taught you know you can save and you hold on to God and, and be holy until you, you, know, you make it to heaven. <laughs> so, but anyway, I was around just a, a huge learning curve. I would, uh, was around professors, and some of them said they were Christian, and some of them the lifestyle didn't line up, or some of them said certain things, and it all sounded good. And I remember uh, I was like, huh, that sound okay. Uh, I don't know. I will go back and I will pray and I say, God, Professor such and such, Dr. Such and such says this. What do you say? And I'll always find the answer in the word of God. And that's really how my gift of discernment. I think I already had it, but I don't think I put language to it until I got away to college. Uh, I will be able to, I will say, no, that's not God. And he would give me dreams and visions. And he would just talk to me through his, I keep putting it, he would talk to me <laughs> um, through his word about what this really is and what spirit is operating behind that. Again, so again, developing a relationship. God, what do you think? What do you say? And God is not like offended. Well, you should know this because you're a Christian. You know, he doesn't say that. People may say that, but God is not. Um, but you're developing. So it's okay to question it. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter how. Like, I love great Bible teachers because I, I love to teach the word. I just love to teach in general. Um, 
So I love the teaching. But anyway, so teachers love teachers. The students uh, and, and teachers are great students, okay? Leaders are, are, are students, basically. And so, but there's some of the greatest minds that you will hear and you'll, you'll hear an error, but it's okay to question. Now, don't necessarily mean you go up to the person and say, well, this is what the word of God says. You know, don't do that. Don't be, dis don't be, dis don't be disrespectful when you hear certain things or even certain doctrines or something just don't hit right in your spirit. It's okay to question that. But go back to the Father and say, Lord, tell me about this. Like, this person says this and uh, i don't huh god what am i, am I is, is it me am i am i just not being confident am i being is it what's going on here you know so again some people sometimes people can be saying the right thing but their motives are off or they're operating by a different spirit sometimes people use the word of god to deceive other people because they're not using it to convict their heart they're using it to justify their agenda Okay, but again, this is sermon. Um, uh, number nine, study the gifts of the spirit. Okay, um, there's this concept called um, the starting of spirits. Now, again, don't be don't be a spiritual space cadet. Develop your relationship with God. But you also want to study the different types of spirits and how they are operating. Again, you can do that through the Word of God. You can read books by Great Deliverance Ministries. But it can have your balance. You want to have a balance. Don't just study like you know, uh, I don't know, uh, evil spirits and then don't develop your, yourself in, in, in the most holy faith, okay? So, but we, there's a concept called discerning of spirits. First John 4, 1 says, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see uh, whether it be from God. Let me say it again. John, First John 4, 1, it says, don't believe every spirit. So that means I can question what I see here or, or sense. I can question it. Don't believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Hmm. If you listen to someone talk long enough, they'll, they'll reveal to you who they really are. Go be able to discern. Now, again, after you start growing in the gift of discernment, you don't always have to like, you, you can call it like it is, just like that. Just like that. That ain't, mm -mm. That ain't what that is. You understand what I'm saying? But again, you question more. And again, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. Nothing, absolutely nothing wrong. Um, so we, we pray for the gift of discernment. You know, identify what gift that person's operating under or you sense. You know what I mean? So um, when we have discernment, we are not easily deceived. And I said this again, said this before, I'll say it again. And you say I've been saved 20, 30, 40 years, you are quick to believe a lie about somebody else. You're quick to listen to some mess and foolishness about people. You don't operate under the gift of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. All truth. And the only way I can include that, because again, because of the scripture, but I remember experiencing certain things even recently, and I kept saying, Lord, how is that such as I said they heard from God and they can and they, and they can hear from God clearly now, and yet it is clear with evidence and receipts that this person is lying. How, sway how, how is this person that level of deceit, but you hearing from God? You ain't hearing all the way. Some is all. Because the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. All truth. You're not quick to believe a lie about you, about the self, about someone else, about the state of the world, when you have the spirit of discernment. That's tight, but it's right. Discernment helps us to engage in spiritual warfare. Other things you cannot cast out a demon that you have invited into your house. So you can't say, Lord, you know, you you know, you can't operate under. Let me just, you can't discern a familiar spirit when you invited a familiar spirit into your house. You cannot get, you know, you cannot discern a lustful spirit when you have operating intentionally in the bitch in the spirit of lust. You cannot uh, 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 discern a spirit of deception when you have made your decision to live a life that's deceived. You understand? That's 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 uh, that's pretty elementary to me. Okay, uh, so begin. Uh, the sermon helps us to engage in spiritual warfare. Okay, all right. The sermon also helps those who are my spirit led, licensed therapists. You will, I promise you, operating the sermon will bless your whole life. It really will. It really, really will. Because you can get down to the nitty gritty. What people, what people present with are their symptoms and what the real problem is sometimes do not mesh up. A lot of times. 
And so what God will do is give you the gift of discernment, also the gift of word of knowledge to be able to deal with the root of the issue, not necessarily focus on symptoms. Okay? I'll give you that one for free. <laughs> what stops people from discerning when and following your own will? You just want to do what you want to do, and that's it. You know, a lot of people want to do what they, what they want to do. They want to say, okay, Lord, now you bless it. Bless it. And God said, wait a minute, I'm God. I don't, I didn't, you know, I don't, I don't answer to you. <laughs> uh, you you're not my boss. <laughs> but people will do that. God, I, I, this is what I want to do. Now, bye, 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 bye. God bless it. <laughs> anyway, uh, fear, anxiety, worry, passiveness, uh, passiveness. Uh, will prevent you from being able to discern. Okay? Uh, perversion, sexual sin, gossip, fault finding. We already talked about your thoughts. Your thoughts. Uh, spiritual strongholds, impure motives. Uh, greed, hatred, bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness all stop us from discerning. So be like, be, be like David. Lord, if there be anything in me that is not like you, create in me a clean heart. So before you try to minister to other people, ask God to purify your own heart. Because you can, you know, let me, but God, purify me. Let me examine me. You understand? Uh, and, but make my heart pure. Philippians 4, 18, read it on your own time. There are certain things you got to meditate on or think on, okay? You cannot think about mess and ask God for discernment. You cannot meditate on what was done to you and then discernment increases. You cannot meditate on uh, 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 think, you know, y'all, you get what I'm saying. So, uh, Philippians 4 8, think on what's right, what's pure, what's lovely, what's admirable, what's excellent, what's praiseworthy. Think on, you have to be intentional about what you think on. Okay, remember, lastly, the Holy Spirit and discernment does not just come to give us goosebumps, but it comes to give us clarity and direction. If I don't have clarity and if I don't have direction, I gotta ask God for more discernment. Okay, and finally, with discernment, comes the spirit of wisdom all right all right that is it for today thank y'all for joining uh those who can and will if you watch us on youtube like comment just subscribe and all that good stuff uh, for those who want to know a little more about me my name is dr samaria colbert you can go to my website www.samariacolbert.com if you want to know more about my my um, <clears throat> excuse me my private practice it is www.kingdom creativecounseling.com and if you want to know a little bit more about my consulting business uh, you can go to www.trainingchristianleaders.com or you can do transformingchristianleaders.com okay thank you we will be back in a day and time for another banger